Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Into the Vault, the show where we reach back into the Disney vault, pull out a movie, and find out if it's a hidden treasure or if it was locked away for our own good. I'm your host Garrison McCraw and today I'm joined by actress, singer, local performer, basically name a thing, she's probably good at it, Jaden McGrail. Hi. Jaden, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for having me over in well, my apartment that I'm also in. <laughs> So today we're looking at a 90s classic. You remember the 90s? Um, I was there for two years of it, so not much. Good years, Doesn't though. a human person's memory start at three? I don't remember. I remember from 2001 on. I'm 21, I don't know when my memory starts. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> Every day I'm like, uh, what did I do yesterday? Uh. I don't know. What did you have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> I don't know. So today we're stepping back to the 90s for The Rocketeer. Now, in front of you, I have placed a poster of the Rocketeer. Can we, like, describe what this looks like to people? Uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot going on. Um, number one, it says the Rocketeer. Yes, the good. That is the title. So, in the middle there, we have three... It kind of looks like a Star Wars poster, where there's a yeah. lot going on. We have three a lot guys. Of action shots. We've got, like, a very generic-looking guy with, like, a leather jacket holding a helmet... Like a weird C-3PO looking like steampunk. A, like a steampunky little yeah. helmet, superhero helmet. Mm -hmm. And then we have a woman who looks like her only purpose is to be a love interest. Ooh. And oh. then we have a man who looks like his only purpose is to be a villain. <laughs> so the perfect movie, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's also wearing like a jetpack. And behind him is a little, little action shot of... A man with his jacket and helmet and a jetpack flying through the air. So I'm guessing he's like a superhero guy. Right. So based just on the title, just on the poster, what do you think this movie is going to be about? What do you think the A to B, beginning to end, is going to be? Well, um, I think that they, they look very vintage. So I'm guessing that he's like a 1950s or 60s style superhero and also on the poster forgot to mention there's like an air force base okay called the big wow <laughs> air force base um wow big wow so um so i think that he's like a military guy who becomes a superhero and some corporate guy tries to stop him ooh yeah and he falls in love with this woman on Not the, the weird mustache man. Not the weird mustache man. That would be that would be a plot twist. <laughs> if that very case. twisty plot. But either way, it's gonna be two thumbs up. A quote from Siskel and Ebert. All right, so I think all we can do now is watch it and see what this is actually about. And we are back. We just finished watching The Rocketeer. Jaden. Yeah. How are you feeling? That was that was pretty fun. It was all that so was, much fun. That was a really really good movie for its time. Just give us like a brief synopsis of what you just saw. All right, so there's this guy Cliff, mm -hmm. and he and his friend um after like this huge shootout with gangsters and police that happens right in the middle of this countryside near their their like, their, like plane. airfield airfield yeah. workshoppy area uh they find this rocket pack mm -hmm. that um the criminals and the police were fighting over yeah it. they were fighting over it and they use it to like save some people on this offhand like oh somebody's dying we need to save them and then everybody figures out who it is and tries to go after the rocket so that they can have the technology because it's Howard Hughes technology, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. And pretty helpful in the midst of all of this World War II tension building up. So Germans want it, the Nazis want it, America wants it. The mobsters want it. Yeah, everybody wants this <laughs> jetpack. Because if you have a jetpack, you can do so many things like fly around a bit. Or conquer first Europe. Now the world. Yes. <laughs> That's what it said in German. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he ends up, like every good superhero movie, fighting back the Nazis and getting the girl. <laughs> so let's go a bit yeah. more uh, like into detail about what we saw. 
So we start with this police shootout. There's the police, they're chasing the mob through Californian countryside. Mm -hmm. Right as Cliff is taking off this really fancy racing plane for the first time, um, and he just so happens to intersect with this police chase, and he's like, oh no, police. Especially since right before they took off, they're like, hey Cliff, don't get a scratch on it. And, like, every time in a movie someone says, don't get a scratch on it, yeah, it gets shot by yeah. mobsters. That's what happens. Um, somehow all of them kind of, like, crash land all in the same place. There's a car wreck and a plane wreck all near the <laughs> same exact air base. The car, the mobster car was shot by the police, and it just goes careening into a gas truck. Mm-hmm. That was just that explodes. That explodes. And then the plane loses one of its wheels and crashes into the ground and catches a blaze. And they're like, "Cliff, we told you not to get a scratch on it." And he's like, "Oops." And and then we move on. Yeah. Then no. then it's just forgotten about for a bit. <laughs> we just don't reference it. Um Cliff decides to move on to, he picks up his date, Jenny, Mm -hmm. from her sorority, and they go out to see a movie because she's really into movies. And in movies. She's in the movies. She plays, like, movie extras because she hasn't gotten her big break yet. That's right. And he's like, why aren't you ever at my air shows? Come on, you're just out there being part of the scenery. She's like, no, I will be an actress. She leaves him. Uh, she also got really upset with him because he didn't tell her that he crashed his plane or that he was shot at or that he could have died, which granted, yeah, that would be upsetting. <laughs> you, she, they were just eating at a diner and they're like, yeah, so Cliff, when you crashed today and almost died, how'd that go? And she said, what? And she did a spit take. <laughs> no, she didn't. She was eating soup. So she's, you know, upset at him for not telling her. Gets up, leaves on a bus back to her, back to where she lives. And Cliff's like, ah, I don't even know what uh, I did wrong. Yeah. And, and everyone's he, like, you're an idiot. <laughs> That's then, what you did. Then he and his friend go back and they're trying to work on new plans yep. to get ready because their other one crashed. And Cliff like sits down and he's like, ow, oh, this has stuff in it. And out pulls this brand new rocket pack (laughs) it's just right there in the seat and he's like whoa and his friend who's like the engineer of the team uh pv he's like hey don't touch this we don't know what it is could be a bomb could be a missile we know the mob and police were all about this thing so stay away from it and cliff's like got it (laughs) and he hits the button and he hits the button and it goes it just flies all over the place, yeah. crashing into everything. Yeah, so they decide to test again, and they saw down a statue <laughs> that's made out of wood, I guess. And they <laughs> somehow finagle it around the statue's arms and take it off and tie it to a peg. So then, a statue, equipped with a rocket pack, is now pegged down, chained down to the ground. And then it in the flies dirt. so hard that the peg comes off. And then they're like, well, we'll test it later. So they go to bed. But then Cliff the next day is like, I gotta be a good boyfriend to Jenny. I gotta tell her about things the moment they happen. So he shows up on her movie set where she's filming a very prestigious... Like Robin Hood-esque. Robin Hood slash Zorro slash thing with this very fancy, like, twiddly mustache (laughs) man named... um, Named Neville Sinclair. Yep. He's very much like a Errol Flynn type yeah. actor. But this guy has a secret. We found out in a scene earlier that he was working with the mob to try to find this rocket pack. Yeah. He's the one paying them. And he threatens them with his fancy... His fancy swishy sword. <laughs> yeah. He like points it at the Swish mobster sword. like, you better get me that rocket pack. And or I'll like, pay ya or I'll less pay, yeah. than if I got my rocket pack. <laughs> And the criminals who all have guns are like, oh, he means business. He has a sword pointed at us. <laughs> yeah, all right. Much elevated. What the nah? Ah, all right. Oh. He has his acting sword, so it's definitely so real it's and sharp. Definitely- <laughs> Let's go back to the scene where they're. Uh, they're Jenny- shooting this movie, yeah. and and Cliff decides to visit like this currently filming movie set and he's like knocking on some of the panels as if they're doors and he's just shouting her name he's like jenny 
Jenna, <laughs> and he knocks one down and it falls on Errol Flynn. Yeah. And and he's like, I want Jenny fired. <laughs> yeah, Errol, uh, uh, St. Clair is like, what? Why is this man on my set? Get him out of here. No, and he says, get Jenny out of here. Get Jenny out of here yeah. and get them both out of here. And Mostly then, Jenny. And Jenny's and, like, how dare you? Yeah. Jenny takes him aside and is like, we, we could have broken up last night you were in no place to visit me at work that was not cool you just got me fired and he's like yeah but i wanted to tell you about something cool that happened in my day i got a jet bag and then she's like that's not cool that's not that's lame and tell me the next time somebody dies <laughs> or don't because you just got me fired but and then um uh, St. Clair was listening in behind scenes like, wait a second, our rocket pack? That's that the thing I like was- my rocket pack! <laughs> so he pulls out- he doesn't pull out a sword. He doesn't. He, he decides to instead approach Jenny when she's, like, gathering her stuff to leave, and he asks her on a date because he's a fancy movie star who can get away with anything. <laughs> yeah. And she says yes because he's a fancy movie star who can get away with anything. Yeah. And she was just fired and he was like, hey, go on a dinner date with me and you'll be less fired and she's like ah, she says okay okay i'm a girl in the 1930s what else am i supposed to do and then um the next day they're having this air show mm-hmm. f- for fun i guess i don't know <laughs> if we get a real reason why it's happening it was a big thing a, a, a long time ago they would have i mean they still go go on today but especially back when planes were shiny and new they would do all these air shows to kind of be like yeah. hey look at it airplanes isn't that but fun what's and the purpose of it in the plot <laughs> we just oh because cliff's a pilot and they were going to be in the air show oh yeah and uh they the plane that they worked on the like junky plane that they found the rocket pack in was being used uh for this clown act where a pilot um, Dresses as a clown, clown and flies a plane. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Which, you know, the audience can definitely see from their ground seats. Yep. <laughs> looking up at the bottom of a plane like, haha, there's a clown in there. You know who else can see it? Mobsters. Who <laughs> hear the, the one mobster oh. that was left alive. Um, right. We did. Yes. So. The one mobster who stole away with the jetpack to begin with. Yeah, in the first car chase. Who left it in the plane. Mm -hmm. He was still alive and he told the rest of the mob that he hid it on this airbase. So they all just go to the airbase during the air show and they're like, let's tear was, this place upside down. That's right. It was actually a very particular, like, criminal who found him at the hospital. It's this big, hulking, like, Frankenstein monster looking guy. We don't really get too much about him, but he's, like, this enforcer style, like, brute who just comes in and is like, where's the rock pack? He's like, I'll never tell you. And the guy's like, no, tell me, because I'm real big. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, I'll tell you. It's over here on the airplane. Go tell the mob. And then the Frankenstein monster just takes this guy in the hospital bed and just snaps him in half. Yep. Disney. <laughs> nice. Nice. And um, So the mobsters know about the rock pack, so now they're at the air show too. So the clown guy happens to be in danger because it's a faulty plane and because um, he is not a good pilot. No. And, um, he apparently hadn't flown in like 20 years. They decide to save him. And Cliff decides that he's going to save him by putting on the rocket pack and this new fancy helmet that will help him turn and do cool plane things. And he <laughs> he flies up above this air show for the first time and people go crazy. Yeah, they see Everybody this. Everybody is like, oh my god. It's a superhero, and we don't even know what that is. <laughs> we don't know what one this of those isn't even are. the forties. So yeah, he has this newfangled helmet that his friend PV uh, like whipped up for him with a fin going across it, so he can like change direction, be more aerodynamic. So Cliff's like flying around trying to rescue um, the clown from the plane, and he does. Yeah, barely making it, if uh-huh. we're being honest. Yeah, we have that one scene that we have in every single superhero movie in which somebody can fly and or kind of fly, in which he just goes after the heroics and he just goes off on a tangent and just flies through the clouds and waves at people and people are like, oh, Oh, a human flying. That is a thing. With a weird... 
steampunk helmet. Yeah, with a weird steampunk helmet. So we, we get don't even that know what scene. that means. Yeah. <laughs> he finally lands in a lake and um, goes to get coffee. Oh, I don't remember what happened. The after. FBI show up and they're like... Oh. Or they're like, oh no, we gotta get out of here. So yeah, Cliff so they- uses Rocket in, in the back of PB's uh, truck... Phoebe came to pick Cliff up, and he uses the rocket to make the car go real fast and get away from and the they FBI. they drive all the way back to the cafe. Yep, <laughs> to get yeah. coffee. Uh, while they're in there, a uh, criminal show up, like, hey, we think. Any of you seen a fella by the name of Cliff, have you? And they're all like, never heard of that man before. How does the mob even know his name at this point? <laughs> They figure out information in this movie so fast. I think they used the power of deduction where it was like Sinclair heard it while at the the film set from Jenny. So he's like, so that's the guy's name. So look for that guy. And the mob's like, got it. We'll look for that guy. So the mob's now in the cafe. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, give us Cliff. They're roughing everybody up. They yep. punch a thing of pastries to get more information out of them. They see uh, Jenny's photo and, like, Jenny's name. They're like, wait, that's the girl that the guy who hired us. That's her picture. Wait, isn't that the girl that he's currently taking on a date to a fancy restaurant? This doesn't add up. So they, like, two of them leave. And two of them stick around like, well, we'll make sure that that Cliff guy doesn't show up. But um, at that point, it's like a restaurant of people against two mobsters. So they're like... They're able to kind of rough them up yep. pretty well. And Cliff's like, oh man, I gotta go rescue Jenny if he if she's with uh, St. Clair. And if there's and, like... And if there's a mob mobs. after her, then they're gonna mob her up. Yep. Yeah. But uh, PV's like, don't, don't go. Don't take the rocket. We have to return it. There's like criminals and stuff now. This is this is bad news. Also, your bet, your jetpack got shot during the roughing up the mobsters, so it won't even fly. And Cliff's like, "Don't even worry about it." And uh, Pee Wee decides to leave like chewed up gum to fill the hole. Yeah. So with their newly repaired jetpack, repaired by Good Luck Gum. <laughs> yeah, Good Luck Gum. Uh, Cliff's like, "Got it." So he he zips off to the restaurant, and while they're there, uh, there's just a very nice dinner going on. Yeah, there's a little clamshell with a singer inside of it. Yep. Jenny's like, well, I'm with a really creepy Errol Flynn style guy, and And he keeps saying really creepy things, like one of these days I might drown in your eyes. And he keeps trying to dance with me. Yeah, and she's like, okay. (laughs) And trying to kiss me, even though he knows I'm with someone, but... No. Yeah, she she needs her job back. Yeah. She's a woman of the 30s. What's she going to do? <laughs> uh, and then Cliff shows up in classic age-old superhero movie tropes, a waiter outfit. Just like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and a million other different ones. <laughs> if anything, Spider-Verse took that from this movie. So Cliff's in his waiter outfit and he's like, Jenny! Jenny! Come on, these guys are bad news. Meet me by the fish statue. But he's, like, dressed up as a waiter and he's pouring soup. And from the letters, the noodle letters of the soup, he spells it out. (laughs) Actually, he writes it on a piece of paper. But I think that the director missed an amazing choice. Of the soup being alphabet soup and him, like, casually sticking his finger in, just moving the letters around. While St. Clair's just there. Mm-hmm. That would have been great. She goes and she meets him and and she's like, what the heck? And he's like, um, the heck is that you're in danger. The mob's after you. They know all of your information. And spoiler alert, I'm the rocketeer. And, she's and she like, says, what? <laughs> what does that mean? He's like, it, it's in all the newspapers today. She's like, I, I haven't had time to check the newspapers what are you saying? What are these words? It's really funny to me that this movie only takes place over the course of two days. <laughs> so then the mob shows up and St. Clair's like, wait a second, I found a note in the soup. He's, he must be that guy. Mob, go get him. And the mob's like, okay. Yeah. So then there's mob and like the big Frankenstein a big guy. chase chase scene through all the restaurants and with the waiters getting all their trays and chefs and stuff happening. Yeah, things getting knocked over. 
antics. You know, classic movie scene. Yeah. Cliff gets out of his waiter outfit, puts on his jetpack and helmet, and he starts rocketing around. Through the restaurant. Yep. Honestly doing Kicking very little. people in the head. Yeah. <laughs> knocking over ice sculptures. <laughs> He's doing very little at this point, except just kind of flying around, setting the restaurant on fire with his rocket pack. Yeah, but everybody's so impressed because it's the 30s, and the only other option for entertainment is going to a Broadway show or listening to your radio. Or an air show. Yeah. And that was already done. That, that already happened. <laughs> but there's uh, a huge ruckus called at this restaurant everybody's running around in a in a fit and jenny decides that she would stick around to make sure that that cliff is okay but then sinclair sneaks up behind her and surprise hits her with a chloroform wipe (laughs) and so she wakes up like in this nice bed and sinclair is there like hey i'm sorry that i kidnapped you I didn't mean to, I promise. Yeah, they're blackmailing me. If anything, I'm as much of a victim as you are. A victim of circumstance. We should kiss since we're both kidnapped people. Yeah, both of us. And she she decides to play a little game and she leads into it. Like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm so confused and a woman. And I'm uncomfortable in my dress. Do you have anything that I can slip into that's more comfortable? And he says, yes. Yes. And he holds up nothing. Yeah. And she's like, oh, well, can you get this zipper? And he's like, yeah. yes. And then she hits him. and with, he, a, with a vase? Yeah. And he falls down and she starts running to this uh, bookshelf. And she's like, there's got to be a hidden door here. Because all he's actors. He's too rich to not have a hidden door. And Pulse she. Books. She's pulling books, and then she finds one that's the the stories of Casanova. <laughs> and she's like, this guy must be this kind of guy. <laughs> and she pulls it and enters his secret room where she discovers... Bum, bum, bum. He's a Nazi. He's a what? A Nazi. <laughs> yeah. So... I did not see that coming. <laughs> So, so he comes in, drops his British accent, and goes, Yavul, you have discovered that I am actually a Nazi. And she's like, what? <laughs> she's... What? <laughs> huh? huh? Nazi? What? And he's like, yes, I am, of course, a Nazi. And so we cut back to Cliff. Uh, the FBI are now involved because he's like, oh, no, there's all this bad stuff going on. And the FBI are like, okay, we'll bring it to the guy who invented the rocket pack. So Howard Hughes is there. Um, They bring him to Howard Hughes because he needs his jetpack back because it's his property and because it's not quite finished, but he needs to finish the tech because Germany is also after the rocket ship, but they haven't figured out the tech behind it to make it actually work. Howard Hughes was the first to do it because Howard Hughes is an eccentric billionaire and they don't have those over in Germany. <laughs> so Cliff's like, I just need the rocket. I just need to use it to save save Ginny. And they're like, no, it's too dangerous. If the Nazis get a hold of this, look what will happen. And he points to a video screen and then a cartoon plays of like... Black and white cartoon. Yeah. Of, like, the these Nazi soldiers with jetpacks mm-hmm. flying over America, destroying everything, yeah, everything's on fire. Yeah, there are American flags on fire. And Nazi flags raising up. <laughs> yeah, and, and then it says at the very end, in German, Today Europe, tomorrow the world. I would like to also pull attention to one of Howard Hughes' lines right before this plays is, Sit up straight and watch this. A man died trying to get it out of Germany. (laughs) As if a cartoon of men jetpacking was worth the life of a man. Yeah. Like, the guy could have just picked up a radio and said, Hey guys, I saw a cartoon of a bunch of guys in jetpacks coming and burning America. They want to use the jetpacks. I don't need to get the tape out because I watched it. Mm -hmm. But Howard Hughes is so 
so weird that he probably just wanted to watch the cartoon as a part of his collection for his random mansion where there are jaguars walking around everywhere and Catherine Hepburn is there. He was probably like, I need you to get me that tape. It's like, sir, I don't know if I can alive. Get me the tape. <laughs> what do you even need it for? Personal reasons. That's America. <laughs> For the safety of the nation. This movie does a great job making Howard Hughes look like a good person. And I'm not saying he was a bad person in real life. I'm just saying he was so much weirder than this movie made him out to be. This movie forgot the fact that he locked himself into a room for 30 days to watch movies. (laughs) Without probably coming out. Probably all Nazi cartoons. Didn't he drink only milk I during that know. time? Maybe. So- he would. Here's the thing. It sounds Round correct. Round two. <laughs> Round two he would. <laughs> yes. It definitely sounds like a thing he would do. Also, all the movies he saw were probably Nazi cartoons. <laughs> Nazi cartoons with them flying jetpacks. Each one was one that a man died to get out of Europe. <laughs> yep. He was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> My second one. <laughs> I- <laughs> so... Cliff's like, no, I'm going to do it. And then he, he escapes. He escapes. And the FBI are like, ah, we'll get that kid and we'll get the jetpack. So we're going to follow him and help him. Yeah. Because they don't chase after Cliff. They just show up whenever it's convenient. Yeah. Um, so. So we go to this meetup where Jenny is going to be handed off from the mob and from secret Nazi Sinclair. And Cliff is going to meet him there, and it's like this entire hostage situation. They do the classic, give me the girl, give me the rocket pack. Okay, but you give me the girl. Okay. But But you give me the rocket pack. (laughs) Um, And then in the midst of this back and forth, Cliff decides to look one of the gangsters in the eye, and he's like the head gangster, top gangster, Mr. Gangster. Valentine is his name. Mr. Gangster Valentine. Yes. And he he's like, hey, Mr. Valentine, how does it feel working for a Nazi? And Valentine's like, what? A Nazi? I did not see that coming. And Cliff's like, that joke was already done. Yeah. <laughs> Jaden already said it back when this entire plot was revealed. <laughs> Um, and Valentine... Valentine says the most iconic line in the world, yep. which is... Um, I may not make an honest buck, but I'm 100% American. I don't work for no two-bit Nazi. <laughs> Let the girl go. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's a great line. The end of this movie is so, like, pro-America. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It, it's basically Captain America. Yeah. The first Avenger. <laughs> um, um, so then the FBI show up and the mobsters are there. And St. Clair calls in, like, Nazi soldiers. So Nazi soldiers come running in from who knows where. Yeah, They're actually, just there. we do know where. There's a giant blimp yep. for peace. <laughs> a Zeppelin comes... Co- over the horizon. Over the horizon. Into the, into the view of the camera. <laughs> and then it just blocks out the entire sky. Um, there's, just, there's just the Zeppelin there. And it's like, where were they hiding that? Because there's an observatory building. Was the blimp behind it? <laughs> just parked. And it's like... And then it just raises up. It's like, I'm here, Nazis. Yep. Um, so there's a shootout where the FBI and the mob work together to defeat the, the Nazis. Nazis. In the midst of this, Sinclair sneaks off with Jenny, and Cliff grabs his jetpack and suits up and goes after them. Uh, Sinclair and Jenny end up in the blimp. And the Germans there are like, do you have the rocket? And he's like, we have the girl, the rocket will come to us. Which he does do, <laughs> yeah, eventually. So the, the rocketeer... Cliff gets his helmet, has his pack, he takes one of the Nazis' guns, he flies up to the top of the observatory, gun in hand, looking off heroic, American flag waving behind him, and the FBI are like, he's our only hope now of saving the girl. And then he rockets off to the blimp. And that shot of him standing in front of the flag is one of the best hero shots I've ever seen in a movie. (laughs) It's a really cool looking helmet too, so it's just the perfect profile. Wind blowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the blimp, he gets encountered by that one 
Frankenstein mobster guy who also is a Nazi. Yes. Because everyone in this film, like real life, either is or is not a Nazi. <laughs> Those are the two things a person can or can't be. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> so Cliff's so, there. So Cliff and the and the monster are fighting. Yep. But Cliff pulls some sneaky tricks and he flies around the blimp and attaches Mr. Nazi to a cable and like swings him into the windows of the blimp to knock him out like teeth so he can sneak his way in that way. <laughs> yeah. And the um, blimp starts to like slowly descend. Um so Cliff gets into the cabin and St. Clair's there like Give us the rocket, and you'll get the girl. A bit, he's... Let's face it, he's already done this bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's really repeating himself at this point. Uh, so, so Cliff is like, fine, I'll give you the rocket. And um, he takes off the rocket, but in doing so, he slips off the gum from the the bullet hole in the rocket. Yeah, from the bullet hole. And we learned from Howard Hughes that the tech that America had that Germany hasn't is that they had a cool filtering system that allowed for the, rocket the not fuel to, to not explode and overheat. But now that the pressure is gone from the double-lined fuel container, it can explode. And so I think we can all see where this is going. After a brief fight with Jenny... <laughs> And yeah. everybody kind of, like, getting all up in arms with each other. And just tussling it out. Jenny fires a flare gun at St. Clair, which is pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, was, she's she's cool. Yeah. Uh, setting the, the Zeppelin afire. So St. Clair's like, well, Rocketeer, it was, it was nice knowing you. Goodbye. And he, like, puts on jetpack and rockets out the window. Mm -hmm. And then he explodes. Yep. And it's, it's as simple as that. Um, uh, the Zeppelin's also about to explode, yep. though. So. so so Jenny and Cliff make their way to the top of the blimp, and... The They're outrunning Frankenmonster on their way as this blimp is exploding behind him. But as Frankenmonster is chained to the blimp, so he didn't fall off, he's also chained to the blimp so he uh, can't escape the explosion of the blimp. So he just gets all caught up in the explosion bit yep. of it. And then Cliff and Jenny hop onto a cleverly placed plane at the end of the book. <laughs> yeah, because Howard Hughes Howard Hughes and uh, PV show up in, like, a helicopter plane. Yep. And they're like, we only have one chance at this. And they throw the ladder down, and Cliff... And it works. <laughs> and Jenny hop on and fly off as the blimp explodes behind them in a shot very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi... When Jabba's desert ship explodes. Yep. And they fly off. So then, with the Nazis all dead, they decide, time to head back to our favorite cafe. And the, everyone's just hanging out, having a nice old time. Howard mm -hmm. Hughes gifts Cliff a brand new plane. It's like, hey, good job being a rocketeer. Here's a plane. And then, then uh, Jenny gifts his friend the plans for the jetpack. That she And found. the blueprints. So he can, like, experiment and try and reinvent stuff, too. Yeah, she found that in St. Clair's home. So it's a happy ending. It's a happy ending. The coolest part of the ending is that most superhero origin stories, we see them continuing to be the superhero. So the end shot is, like, them as a superhero freeze frame. Yep. <laughs> you know, flying around. But, but with the Rocketeer, he's just kind of like, yeah, I did my superheroing, but now it's time for me to be a good boyfriend. <laughs> and that's how it ends. So, Jaden, what did you think of this movie? I thought it was lots of fun. I, I think that when we were watching it, we used a phrase that's like the good kind of cheesy. Yeah. Yeah, it has like some very predictable moments and and very predictable dialogue. There and was <laughs> one moment in particular where St. Clair and Cliff are battling it out on the Zeppelin and uh, Cliff like gets a good hit on him and says like, you don't have your stuntman to do that for you? Bet you something but, or other. It's like, bet you wish your stuntman was here and then St. Clair hits him back and right before he says it, Jaden goes, 
I do my own stunts. And then we hear Sinclair say, I, I do, do my, my own, own stunts. <laughs> we we almost had to pause the movie because that moment was good enough alone. It was wonderful. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, it was a really charming movie. Really good stuff. Really good designing. It's definitely of its time, the time being the 90s. Yep. I thought in terms of female characters, I thought Jenny was very well written. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was very well written. and She, th- she is her femininity to her advantage. She, mm-hmm. she throws a punch herself. She helps save the day in the end, you know? Yeah, but at the same time, she has her own personality bits, her own things that are not necessarily good traits or things that are, like, fine traits. Like, she's very well written. Mm-hmm. Um... You, you became, like, really close-knit with characters who are not on s- screen for very much time at all. Like, like I loved the character of the coffee house's owner's daughter. Oh, yeah, and, just the little girl. Yeah, and I loved the character of Mr. Mob Guy. Yep. <laughs> and all of these random placed people... Um, it really gave, like, good writing for this small town. Mm-hmm. Really cool designing elements. It felt like a token of the 40s and a token of the 90s at the same time, especially from their haircuts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone had, like, the kind of haircuts you'd expect someone in the 30s to have with a 90s barber. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like if if you have a 90s haircut, but you decide to part it a little bit differently <laughs> so it can look like it's more from the 30s. <laughs> Which, I mean, at least they tried. Yeah. Yeah. They kept true to themselves. Yeah. There was a lot of great, like, humor in the movie. Yeah. A lot of... It wasn't like a heavy action movie, but I thought the bits were, with action they were, were really, exciting. And they had fun. some really cool pyrotechnics. They yeah. blew up a blimp, yeah, and a car, and a car again. <laughs> and there were two planes. times, two times a vehicle ran into a gas tank and it exploded. Yeah, I'm like, oh no, this city's just full of gas tanks. It was the same like gas truck too, yeah. like exact same design. I would I would have appreciated a. Not my cabbages style bit throughout the whole movie mm-hmm. where just things kept hitting the no, gas. No, exactly like my cabbages. <laughs> like the guy, it's the same guy. I wanted no, the exploding my blimp to fall down onto another gas truck that looked exactly <laughs> the same and have the guy be like, business is business, where's my quota? <laughs> like he said before, twice. <laughs> so this movie has a lot of... um. So this movie has a lot of interesting facts about it. Um, the director, Joe Johnson, he um, also directed Captain America the First Avenger, which is another... So the movie that I referenced? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, no. that makes sense. He has he has some very good 30s flair. He has... He really likes Nazis. He really likes superheroes fighting Nazis. He likes... Which, don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> he likes inventor's name, Howard... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that Building too. tech for heroes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he w- he worked on a lot of um, Star Wars projects as like a designer and art director. So there's many shots that remind me of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah. So another cool thing about the Rocketeers, is there's actually quite a few references in the parks. Yes. We actually went together we to did. studios, mm-hmm. Hollywood Studios, and we found in front of the Chinese theater, they have all those handprints. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the handprints of not the actor who plays the Rocketeer, but the actual Rocketeer himself. And you can tell because you have his handprints, his footprints, and then like little little blast marks from where he just zoomed off. Also, it says the Rocketeer. That was my yeah. clue. Yeah, but that could be like... That could be any of the Rocketeer. <laughs> that could be any of the Rocketeer. Not our Rocketeer. Definitely not our Rocketeer, but at least this one has a rocket. So, speaking of the rockets, we actually see the rocket, the jetpack itself, in Hollywood Studios, too. Um, There's a little soda stand right in the, like, lake area with the giant dinosaur, and that is Peavy's soda stand. Yeah, his name is right on the building. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And then you see the helmet and the rocket just kind of shoved into a corner next to one of the Diet Coke, like, freestyle machines. It makes me wonder if they just had those lying around and they were like, what what rocketeer-based thing could we have in this park? It's like, Jeff, do you have... Do you have the idea for the Rocketeer thing? Y- yep. What is it? A Coca-Cola stand. What's up to do with Rocketeer? It's name Peavies. Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah, like that's that like the guy. Sense. It's like from the, the Rocketeer. Guy. He definitely would open a Coca-Cola store after his wild success with Howard Hughes and everybody. <laughs> that's um, for sure the thing. Uh, another small reference you can find is they have a teeny tiny little statue helmet in the men's clothing warehouse in co-op at disney springs if it's still there it is the fountain music isn't there why don't you talk a little bit about that fountain music that used to exist (laughs) um as of a few days before the recording of this there was the fountain of nations at epcot (laughs) yep they had this um like 30 minute or so loop of music one of the musical pieces was part of the score from the rocketeer called the flying circus R.I.P. Fountain of Nations. You will be missed. You will be missed. Yep. Hello, Moana, Fountain of Mazes. Fountain of Mazes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those are a few references that you can find. So, Jane, speaking of the parks, now's the segment of the show where we have to build a ride based off the Rocketeer. So if the Rocketeer had come out and the Walt Disney Company was like, we need a ride about this movie in Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. Where would they put it? What kind of ride would it be? Would it even be a ride? Oh. Would they make it a restaurant? Would they make it a juice stand? I think I think it would definitely be a ride. Okay. And I think it would definitely be a roller coaster. What park are we thinking? Um, Epcot, Future World. Okay. Yeah, Either yeah. Epcot, Future World, or Tomorrowland. Ooh. I love this, because Epcot already is designed based off the World's Fair. Exactly. And the Rocketeer... Like, the rocket pack in the movie was Was a design that Howard Hughes was making for the the 1939 World's World's Fair. Fair. Ooh, I love this. So, we already have built-in theming. Maybe the setup is that it's the World's Fair. Mm -hmm. You're at the World's Fair. Howard Hughes is um, debuting his... Maybe for, like, maybe the 1940 World's Fair or something other than that. I want the experience, and I think... The most effective way to display this movie is to share the experience of flying in the rocket pack itself. So the theming could be that Howard Hughes and, um, what's his name? PV. PV were able to create a line of usable jetpacks. Ooh. For everybody to come in and enjoy. And this is a roller coaster, right? This is a roller coaster. Are we thinking like... It would not be a cart roller coaster. No. It would be the first ever Disney roller coaster where you're laying down flat. Like Manta at SeaWorld or Superman the Ride if you go to Six Flags. Yeah, it would be a Superman style ride. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. That would be so much fun. You could have the the construction of the ride vehicles look like the jet pack itself. So when you strap in, you're strapping into the rocket pack. Yeah, you're strapping into the rocket pack. Granted, you'd be seating down and stuff because that's how it works. But, right. Um, but it would still look super cool, super sleek. So let's craft the story of this ride. Um, so you're at the World's Fair. Howard Hughes and PV are debuting their new multi-person jet pack where tons of people can experience what it's like yes. to be the rocketeer. Yes, exactly. But does everything go right? I don't think so. I think if it's the 1940 World's Fair and World War II is in full swing, then we need some Nazis. We just, we need them for theming. Maybe maybe we could have a gangster versus Nazi moment. Okay, so is this like... It's a shootout that you get stuck in between. So the whole ride is the FBI and mobsters versus the Nazis, and you're just experiencing it from the rocket? Well, I... Um, I think I think there would definitely have to be some pre-show moments that would be centric on the World's Fair. You would have to have some audio pumped in. But we see all the time with regular track roller coasters of there being times where you slow down and you have show moments in the middle. I don't think there are any Superman-style roller coasters where you've been able to do that. But what if you could kind of lean back down into a sitting position? I was just about to suggest that. Experience a show moment and then go back up into the flying. Right, so when you're in the show moments, you're like, you're, ver- you're like, 
you're upright sitting, you're just sitting down normally. Yeah, you're sitting down rocket normally. Rocket pack. And you see the show moments, and then it's like, the Nazis are coming. So then it becomes, um, like, perpendicular again, and then it takes off. Yeah. Like a rock, just like a rocket pack. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I love this idea. Yeah, man. <laughs> you could have um, a pre-show moment. I I mean, I'd love a pre-show moment with both Hughes and with PV. Yeah. Because both of them are such cool characters. You get the sleek upper end of, like, the the know-it-all scientist and then, like, the inner mechanic style kind of, like, you strap yourself in and it goes <laughs> style dude. Like, PV, tell him how the rocket works. All right, you uh, put on the rocket and then you fly. <laughs> And then it goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would kind of be like the Dr. Marsh versus Seeker vibe. Yeah. Except PV would not PV peeve would be... off no. Hughes. <laughs> because then he would lose funding. No. If anything, I think I think PV would be the, the straight man in the scenario. And Hughes is the eccentric one. Yeah, but Hughes is like all the glitz and glamour of the first bit. Of like, you are about to embark on a... Time, Rover. <laughs> yeah. You are yep. about to embark on the most glamorous jetpack And then he comes in, ever. well, you know, if it works. And, and he's like, you gotta use your seatbelts. <laughs> Trust me, we strapped a mannequin into this and he wasn't wearing a seatbelt and now he is half the way to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think I would want to, in the queue line, walk through all of the different World's Fair prototypes that Ooh. have been used across the ages. It's like Howard Hughes is like, Welcome to my Collection. many toys, yeah. you know, and then it could be interactive. You can have like little test like yeah. things where there's like a little screen. You hit a button. It shows like a rocket flying. So and yeah, you can like have like little that. games and stuff. I love this. Mm -hmm. I would definitely want we see posters of the rocket man in the movie on the World's Fair kind of like advertisements. I would want a lot more of those just everywhere. Right. Because those are so pretty looking. Yes. And then at the end, you have a moment where it's like, congratulations, you helped, you helped save, you saved America, the World's Fair, and me, Howard Hughes. You're all rocketeers now. Yeah. I think, I think that would be such a fun, such a fun ride. And there's plenty of space in Future World and Epcot. Yeah. On Future World East, now yeah. that there's a rival Guardians coaster over on the other side, it would be... It would be a fun way to bring back kind of some of the old centric flair. I love that. Yeah. So, Jaden, now we have to decide. Was this in the vault because it was a hidden gem, or was it locked away for our own protection? Oh, it's definitely a hidden gem. This was definitely 100% a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend people go watch this. It's a very, very good movie. Well, Jaden, thank you for joining us here today. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. I'll have you back on. We'll watch more movies. Yep. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs> And we'll see you next time. See ya.